in this hall and those online can you raise your voice and just honor him magnify him glorify the name of the king of kings nothing sets the atmosphere for the move of god's presence and power like worship ascribe unto him greatness O israel his strength is in the cloud give him praise Come on in your own words, in your own words, in your own words, bless him, bless him, everybody, young and old, bless him, boy or girl, man and woman, honor him, magnify the name of the Lord, magnify his name, magnify his name, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. You can sing in the spirit, you can pray in the Holy Ghost if you want to. Just lift up a sound of worship, of thanksgiving to the God who reigns forever. Lift your hands. Most high God of heaven, most high ruler of the congregation sing most. Congregation and the strings. Halle, halle. Sing it to him, to God most high.
I was preparing in my room, my bedroom, before this meeting, while the prayers was going on, I heard the Lord said in my ear, He said, Restoration. 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 And when I sat there, while the service was just going on, I heard him say clearly again, he said, I'm restoring the years that seemed wasted. He said, I'm restoring the years that seemed wasted. It looked like you wasted time or you looked like you were behind time. But God says you weren't wasting time because you were waiting on me. No man that waits on him wastes time. Because he's the God of eternity and time. Restoration. Can you lift your hands and bless him one more time? He's restoring your joy. He's restoring your peace. He's restoring your lost hope. He's restoring your finances. He's restoring your health. He's restoring your marriage. He's restoring the anointing upon your life. He's restoring spiritual giftings. He's restoring his presence in another dimension. When God restores, he brings much more than what was lost. When God restores, he brings back much more than what was lost. Blessing. 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 Is there a Daniel? Daniel. Daniel. Your first name. Daniel. Is there a Daniel here? Daniel. We'll be seated shortly, but I just heard that name. Daniel. It's your first name. Daniel. 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 Where's that lady who testified? Jennifer or something? Is it Jennifer? Not, not Jessica. Jennifer. Jennifer, right? When I was in the car, I heard the name. Before, before even she came out, I heard the name. Jennifer, come. Stand here. Just shoot them. You're done too? Come stand. Just stand here on the straight line. Most high King Lord of heaven, most high ruler of the earth, most high Savior, King of nations, high. If I hold my hand, God is going to do something in your family that will bring joy. Jennifer, God is about to do something mighty in your life and in your family you have never seen before that will bring joy. Come. Come closer. That will bring joy. That will bring joy. I don't know why I keep seeing the letter L around you. The letter L. The letter L. Where's your family? Where's your family? Eh? Your family is in where? Gombe. All of them? My mother and my siblings. Your mother and your siblings. Where's your dad? We lost him. Late. Yes, sir. God is about to do something mighty. Amen. God is about to take away reproach Amen. from your family. 
and something is about to happen in the area of finance that you have never seen before Amen. whose name starts with the letter L none of us we are all J huh? none, none of us you are all J in your house yes sir L I am seeing that L L L L what do you have to do with Lagos? Lagos. Your family. Lagos. Lagos. What month were you born? October. Huh? October. October. Lagos. Something great is about to happen. I just kept seeing Lagos. 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 But some of these things you may not, you may not know. Some of the information may be hidden from you. But all your all your siblings, where were they born? We were all born in Ashaka, Gombe. Ashaka, in Gombe, there. Yes, sir. Lagos. <laughs> Lagos. 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 God is showing me there's somebody in your family that had something to do with Lagos. That's what I'm seeing. Because I'm seeing the disparity between where you are and Lagos. Lagos. Father, hold my hand. In the name of Jesus, turn away reproach. Turn away reproach. Turn away reproach and bring a mega breakthrough in the area of finances. Breakthrough that will settle debts because I see debts. Huh? Do you hear what I'm saying? I see debts around your family. Breakthrough that will settle debts in the name of Jesus. Let that grace be bestowed in the name of Jesus. It's well with you. Lagos. I don't know why it's coming very strong. Lagos. Lagos. Who was born in Lagos here? Lagos. 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 God bless you. You can go. Something great is about to happen. Are you hearing me? Did you hear me, Jennifer? Something mega is about to happen. I see a heavy financial flow coming to your family. <laughs> Look at this laugh because you remember it. Huh? Lagos. Who was born in Lagos? I'm pushing it away. It's coming back. Lagos. Lagos. It's either you or your sibling. Come, Daniel. Father, in the name of Jesus. Most high God of heaven, mm. most high ruler of the earth, most high, most high King of nations, hallelujah. take this news back home hmm? I don't think I've prophesied on you for a long time take this news back home there's a revolution that is about to happen in your family there's a change that is coming there's a change that is coming and the Lord says he will comfort your family he will strengthen them this is not supposed to be a bad prophecy but this change will come with many things because I see that between now and the end of the year there may be the loss of someone in your family not your immediate family but around 
okay there may be the loss of a loved one but God says that your heart should not be troubled he will comfort the family and after that loss there's going to be a major restoration that will happen is it going to be a major restoration that will happen in the area of finances oh thank you father i stand in the spirit and i'm seeing a very large book open and written on that book is the word remembrance is the book of remembrance and god has opened the book of remembrance for your family Amen. Because there's some money owed your father that is about to be paid. Amen. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what I'm talking about? Is it true? Yes, there's some money owed him that is about to be paid. There's some money. And while that money is being paid, God is going to be clearing away debts. Yes. I'm seeing debts. This debt I'm seeing is around it's close to some hundreds of thousand hmm? yes and i see that your father has been praying what he's going to do about it but there's going to be a major explosion that will happen between now and the month november there's going to be a change that will happen remember there may be a loss of someone in the family but god is going to bring restoration in the name of jesus Father, I release that grace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Say one, two, three, four. Wow. How many children are the, of your mother I'm the only one you're the only one yes, sir. Mm. Two. were you the first issue think very well were you the first issue No, you were not. You have no idea. When you go back, you go and confirm. Eh? Your mother is supposed to have four children. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. But because you don't know it, I won't continue. Otherwise, I wanted to trace it to something that has been happening bad that God wants to break. But since you don't know, I won't continue. There's no need. Help, eh? man, Lord. help me. Eh, don't, don't worry. God will help you. <laughs> you were not... You are not supposed to be the only one. Something happened. Something happened. And it's been the attack of the enemy. But you don't know, so I can't go for that. Hmm? But God is about to wipe tears Amen. away. God is about to wipe tears Amen. away. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray restoration in this family. In the name of Jesus. I pray restoration in this family. In the name of Jesus. And let every pattern of the enemy that has been carefully hidden in this family be cut off by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let demonic patterns be over. In the name of Jesus. I would have continued, but you don't know what I'm saying. But don't worry. God is bringing restoration. In the name of Jesus. Can you wave your hands and give him praise? Yes, what's that? You were born where? You were born where? Give him the mic. Lagos, sir. You were born in Lagos. Yes, sir. Hey, hey, stand here. I can't be wrong. It's either God is a liar or the person doesn't know. Hmm? And God cannot be a liar. God is not a man that he should lie. Ah. Hey, ba, 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 ba. Sha, ba, ba. Hold my hand, sir. Balam, bala, bala, basha. Rabaka baba sabara mama basa. Rama baba masa. 
Hey. I'm, I don't know why I'm looking at you and I'm seeing water, water around your origin, where you come from. I'm seeing a lot of water around. Where do you come from? Enugu, sir. The south. Uh-huh. You come from the south, right? Yes, Enugu to be precise. I'm seeing a lot of Mahaso, Imako, Baiba, Basha, Basha, Bre, Ebrabu, Shabru, Brabu, Brabu, Shabu, Jalabaka, Baradaba, Suki. Hmm. Ze, zo, zo, ze. Bo, 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 ze, bo. Where do you come from? What local government? Udi. Udi. Yes, sir. D. I'm in the spirit realm. I'm seeing where you are born. And I'm seeing where you come from. Because there's something that God will end in your life today. Yeah. What do you do? I'm a military person. You're a military personnel. Yes, sir. There's something that God will put an end to in your life. Amen. There's an issue of instability in your family. Yes, instability yes sir things are not stable yes sir relationships are not stable yes sir jobs yes business sir. yes sir start finish start finish yes sir god is showing me that this thing because i'm standing in a place huh yes sir i'm in the spirit realm somebody say in the spirit <laughs> hey i'm in the spirit and I'm in a town in Enugu. I'm in a town. I'm seeing the name of that town, Ngo. 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 Then from Ngo, I'm on an express road. Do you know that place? No, no, no sir. You don't know. You don't know the place. You don't know where you come from. You don't know Enugu much. I know, but I don't. I know my place. I know my village. But you don't know that place. Yes, All right, I will get there. I am in this town and I'm on the express road. And the express road is a smooth road. Looks like it's not been long constructed. Then I get to a place like a roundabout. Yes, sir. This roundabout has three roads. Yes, sir. You come from one, there are two others like this. Yes, sir. When you take the one, Mahate Labakuriabas. When you take the one that goes your right, and then it, the road looks like it bends again towards your left. Yes, sir. That's when you get to your town, Udi. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. This place where you I'm seeing a lot of palm trees around where you come from. Yes, sir. Palm trees around. Yes, sir. A lot of palm trees. It's like that's part of the occupation there. Yes, sir. Palm trees. They, yes, are, they do a lot of palm wine tapping and a lot of yes, palm farming and all of that. Yes, sir. Palm fruits. Yes, sir. Who had a palm a plantation in your family? Like a plantation, like a farm. My father. A, had your a father had a palm plantation. Yes, sir. This instability is from your grandfather that's what i'm seeing did you know your grandfather did you ever see him no sir because i'm seeing a man that is light in complexion that's my father. and he's tall light in complexion he says who my father is light in your father is light in complexion no, sir. this man i'm seeing your father looks like your grandfather your, your grandfather is tall light in complexion he was a bit slender then your father is also light in complexion yes sir hey you know i'm tracing it down the reason is because it's a pattern that must be broken now amen. i thought i would hear amen amen is it okay can i continue or let me let me stop God is about to break instability. Amen. Even you, sir, there's something wrong with your finance. There's something wrong with your finance that God wants to put on an end. There's something wrong with your finance, and I'll prove it to you. I hope you're not embarrassed, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'll prove it to you. There's something wrong with your finance. Because 
I'm seeing the phone on your ear. Just risk. No, I won't say this one on the mic. that information is is not supposed to be here but father in the name of jesus what's the uche sir uche who is uche that's my name that's your name what's the name of your governor the governor of your state no not that name the other one his name is ifain right who is ifain in your family because I'm seeing an if I around your family. I think it's my father's. Your father's, your relative from your father's side. Yes, sir. Father, stretch your hands towards him. In the name of Jesus, we put an end to this demonic pattern. We put an end to instability. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I just heard a word in my spirit. I heard start and you will finish. And what I'm seeing is a project. What I'm seeing is a building project. That's what I'm seeing. And the Lord said start and you will finish. Who is into a building project? I've seen a building project and the Lord is saying start and you shall finish. Your father is into He's into a building project. He just built, but he has not finished it. He has not finished it. He's just started. Even you, you are about to enter a project. Yes, sir. Yes, you are about to enter a building project. Father, the Bible declares that the hand of Zerubbabel that started this work will finish it. I declare from today the grace for finishing. The finisher's grace is upon you. Let the pattern of hell be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, I separate you. I separate you from every demonic ancestral pattern in your family in the name of Jesus and I declare that it is well with you in Jesus name God bless you sir it's done put your hands and give God praise most I be seated God of heaven most I Please bring out your writing materials. Let's go into the word briefly. I told us a few Sundays ago that right from the beginning of this year, I began to envisage that we're going to have a time, a season of prayer, spiritual warfare, deliverance, and the prophetic, right? I came to tell you that that season has come. So some of our services, I will come and teach one thing and then we'll do another thing. Okay? Yeah. Maybe after the miracle service of June, we may have a few Sundays dedicated to spiritual warfare, prayers, deliverance, prophetic, ministrations all kinds of things 
I just I had been sensing that from the beginning of the year, but I, did, I needed to know exactly at what time. And you see, when God permits those kind of things, it's because an end of a season must come so that a new season must begin. So the few Sundays ahead, maybe from this month to the end of June, we may come, I will teach one thing, and then we'll do another thing. You understand? Uh -huh. So what I will teach tonight may not be related to what I'm doing, but when I finish, we'll do another thing. You get it? So that we can compress time. And God will help us in Jesus' name. All right. Let's begin a small series on relationship. Worship team, thank you very much for that powerful session. God bless you. Let's begin a small series on relationship. Then after that, we'll pray. Amen? Yeah. But God is going to restore somebody today. Yes. And I want us to be conscious of the atmosphere that we are seated on that. Mm. All right. Building godly relationships. Let's uh, teach briefly and then we'll pray. We're going to pray two special prayers at the end of the teaching. And if God permits, I'll minister to a few and then we'll close. So that's how the services will be from now. I'll come and teach one thing and then do another thing. Amen? So I want our hearts to be open. Building godly relationships. Alright, the word relationship, let's try and define it. And then we'll now look at what godly relationships are. Then we'll enter the scriptures and begin. Amen. So how many of us are happy that we are doing this series? All right. We will not finish all today. Maybe next week we will do a part of it again and then prepare for miracle service and then just see the things that God will just do for us. But I just want your heart to be open. All the services that we are going to be having from now, I see the Lord doing a lot of things and I want your heart to be extremely open to what God is about to do. All right, relationships. <clears throat> so let's define a little. Number one, relationships, or number one definition, is a system of communication and sharing of mutual interests between two or more entities. It's a system of communication and sharing of mutual interests between two or more entities. Is a system of communication and the sharing of mutual interest between two or more entities. Relationship is also or can also be defined as the science of connectivity. The science of connectivity. Everything on this earth thrives and exists on the strength of relationship. Relationship is the science that connects things. As far as one thing or an individual will deal with others, then relationship is something you cannot deny. Relationship is also the coexistence phenomenon. Relationship is the coexistence or coexistent phenomenon. How things relate how things coexist, how things interact on earth. It's often said that no man is an island, isn't it? Good. That means that as long as you are in this life, you must definitely relate with or connect to people or to things. That's the reason why understanding relationship is very, very important. That's why I call it the science of connectivity. So that's just a briefing on what relationship generally 
is but then we are discussing building godly relationships so what is or what are godly relationships number one it is God's system for interaction between him and his creation of course that it is godly relationship means that you cannot isolate God from it it is God's system for interaction God created the system for interaction between him and his creation that means that everything that God created he put in them the ability to communicate to relate more so to relate with him the Bible says in Colossians chapter 1 that in him all things consist and in Acts chapter 17 the Bible says in him we live we move and we have our being so it is God's system for interaction between him and his creation number two it is the innate desire of sharing and coexistence the innate desire of sharing and coexistence in every living thing the innate desire by default every living thing has that desire to share to communicate including plants there's something called photosynthesis right and it's all about green plants their relationship with light and the product of that relationship is food for their nutrition so there is an innate desire in every living thing to share to communicate and to coexist with others the innate desire of sharing and coexistence in every living thing with his or her immediate environment founded upon divine patterns and principle founded upon divine patterns divine patterns and principles it's founded upon divine patterns and principles if it is God's systems there are patterns approved or accredited to God or by God upon which living things can interact with their immediate environment number three it is God's strategy on the earth relationships godly relationships are God's strategies or is God's strategy on the earth for the discovery implementation and actualization of his purposes God's strategy on earth for the discovery implementation and actualization of his purposes how many words do we have there three words number one discovery number two implementation number three actualization can we say it together number one discovery number two implementation number three actualization of what his purposes the purposes of God it is a strategy that governs the discovery that means you cannot discover your purpose or God's purpose for your life without engaging the system or the strategy of godly relationship isn't it yes when God called Paul the Apostle he had to send a man to him in the name of Ananias there are certain people you meet in this life and meeting them opens you either it reintroduces you to God's purpose for your life or it opens you to another chapter of the dealings of God or the purposes of God for your life amen that is godly relationships now if it is God's system or God's strategy it also means that Satan can take advantage of it if you are here say amen. amen you see satan is not an original satan is a copycat first of all you must understand that satan was a created being and the technology that created him 
permitted that he can only recreate or introduce new things based on his connectivity or relationship with his creator godly relationship that's the reason why when satan was cast down he lost everything he had as lucifer so satan what he does is that he recycles the tricks that he had learned from god and one of the things that he can do is that he uses or he perverts the methods of god to bring about destruction or to frustrate the purpose of god that means that if god uses relationships to make men satan can use relationships to destroy men is that true you're talking to me as if you're not here you don't like this teaching okay let's close it and do deliverance eh let's go to a scripture for deliverance abby just be patient with me let me do this one huh? everybody says strategy good when you understand relationship as a strategy you will take cognizance of every person that comes into your life people who come into your life there are three um, phases or three dimensions of the operation of godly relationships in your life in other words when god brings men or women into your life as an individual they operate in three different ways there are those who come into your life for a moment you meet them once and that's all you probably may never get to meet them again there are those who come into your life for a season you meet them for about one two three four five months two three five years like if you are in the university from 100 level you are colleagues with certain people you have met those people and you'll be with them for four five or six years depending on the duration of your course isn't it good so you meet those people and they stay in your life for a season but then there are those who come into your life godly relationships ordained by god and they stay for life so how many ways now three number one those that come for a moment you meet them for a moment number two those you meet for a season be careful not to replace those who come into your life for a moment as those who come into your life for a season otherwise after that moment that kairos moment when they have achieved what God wanted them to achieve, they will become a parasite or a virus or a stumbling block. That means that those kind of relationships should not stay when it has achieved. These things you need discernment to know. You need the Holy Spirit. Why? Because relationships are His strategy. You don't just meet people because you like people. No. When God created you, He wired it as a design in you so that it will sponsor your coexistence on earth. Be careful so that the people that come into your life for a lifetime are not treated as those who come into your life for a moment. The man who carried the cross for Jesus, his name was who? Huh? Simon of where? after carrying the cross and dropping the cross did jesus see him again that's it and the bible did not tell us that when jesus resurrected he looked for the man's house to tell him thank you for carrying the cross for me did your bible say so no jesus had crowds following him but among the crowds he had 70 that he walked with and he trained but among the 70 he had 12 and among the 12 he had three these are different stages of their relationship and that's the reason why when jesus resurrected he didn't appear to all of them as often as he did with some and out of the three he had one amen 
and that one was so close to him that even when he had gone to heaven many years later he came back and appeared to that one amen so when you understand that relationships are strategies you don't just meet people because you like people you don't just meet people because there are people on earth but it's a strategy that has been carefully concealed in your destiny that you will coexist with certain people at certain seasons of your life for the achievement and the fulfillment of divine purposes not just for your personal gain everybody says strategy so godly relationships are god's strategy ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 8 to 12 let's uh, read the scripture briefly ecclesiastes happens to be the 21st book of the bible And as it applies to the understanding of times and seasons, we are in the 21st year of the 21st century. That means that Ecclesiastes is a book you must study. Every wisdom that comes from that book has been carefully factored in God prophetically so that we can understand his dealings and know how to order our lives. Somebody say amen. So let's look at the 21st book and see the wisdom for the 21st year in the 21st century ecclesiastes 4 verse 8 to 12 there is one alone without companion he has neither son nor brother yet there is no end to all his labors nor is his eye satisfied with riches but he never asks, for whom do i toil and deprive myself of good this also is what Talk to me. This also is what? And a grave misfortune. That means it is a taboo. Go back to that verse. It's a taboo or an error for a man to think he can live alone or survive alone. That means that selfishness was not in God's plan when he was creating mankind. And this verse just explains this selfish... Of course, selfishness came as a derived nature of the fallen man. And this is the nature of the fallen man that he does what why is this thing not bright he says he has no son no brother nobody around him he's alone he's a lone ranger he's everything to himself he's almighty he's self-sufficient yet the bible says because of that there is no end to all his labor that means that if he had people around him there would have been help supplied to him and the Bible says that he will never ask whom he toils for or he gathers all he's good for. Verse 9. Let's go on. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Next verse up to verse 12. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, when he falls, for, when, for he has no one to help him Oh, next verse again if two lie down together they will keep warm if you are married say amen if you are not married close your eyes from that verse I'm not saying engaged even if your wedding is tomorrow close your eye from that verse some people say hey, pastor let's just learn it now now we are already entering there keep quiet learn it there after all marriage is an institution isn't it I'm coming there Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Thank God we are in heat season, so there's no need for two to lie down together. Amen. All right. Last verse. Let's read it together at the count of three. One, two, go. Though one may be overpowered by another two can withstand him though one may be empowered by another two can withstand him but a threefold cord is not easily broken so the, these verses we read started by giving us the science of relationship that it is necessary for two people to coexist why because when one falls or when one is in need the other one can help and then the Bible here now says that if one 
is opposed he will be overpowered but when there are two they can withstand the opposition and if there are three in other words the more the people the stronger good so relationship in this context becomes like an advantage the bible says in proverbs that in the multitude of people is the king's honor in other words now let me strike a balance to that that doesn't mean that if you don't have plenty of people around you you will not succeed no what it means is that if you have strategic relationships around you because you can have 10 mumus around you everybody say amen it's not an insult it's just the description of a state amen it's not an insult amen and you can have three wise and intelligent people around you and because of that destiny is fulfilled remember the story of the four friends one of them was paralyzed and the remaining four guys brought themselves together and they took the man opened the roof where jesus was in the house and put him there and he was healed when you have godly relationships around your life every purpose of god can be achieved but the bible says woe unto that man that is what alone you know even in christendom we have lone rangers we have people who want to survive alone say nobody can handle my anointing i am different they can't understand me the way i work with god is different that's an explanation that's the explanation of foolishness foolishness rather amen or maybe you are a pastor or you are called and you feel you can just stand alone <laughs> let me tell you the truth the reason why they could capture jesus was because they ran everybody ran away from him read your bible very well the bible says all his disciples fled and then they laid hold of him so it is important that we understand and as we are rising in grace and in purpose one of the strategies that god has carefully knitted around our lives is the strategy of godly relationships that means not all relationships are of god or are authorized by god or are approved by god in your life for instance the bible says be not unequally yoked with unbelievers so when you are in a relationship with a, an unbeliever depending on the kind of relationship that's not a godly relationship amen except if of course god brought that unbeliever into your life for a moment to fulfill something just the way Pilate had to be there present so that jesus would be crucified is that it but if you talk about relationships that will thrive that will exist with you as you are on your way to fulfilling god's purpose then it must be strategic it must be approved of god and it means that those people must succumb to the patterns that god has laid out first of all you must understand that you are a, a new creature you are a believer you are a christian and so there is a pattern by which your life must exist on earth so if it is truly a godly relationship that will stay in your life they must be people that conform to the standard of the faith that you profess if you are with me say amen. amen all right so there are several categories of relationships i, I will give you the basics and then we'll continue there are four basic categories of relationship number one marriage marriage and then number two which is close to it you know courtship courtship though that is timely but and it doesn't it doesn't last for too long but then it is still a stage of relationship between two or more persons two persons rather number three friendship and number four partnership so number one is what talk to me number one is what number two number three number four partnership so these are the four basic categories of godly 
relationship and we are going to look at about two of them today then maybe next week if we have the time we'll look at two others but before we start looking at them i want you to write this down these are fundamentals in building godly relationships fundamentals remember i told you that godly relationships operate on divine patterns and they are founded upon divine principles that means there are things that we must take cognizance of there are fundamentals essentials that you must know for you to be able to build because a relationship is like a living thing in fact it is a living thing it's a living phenomenon it grows and it can die amen we are trying to look at how we can build it number one what are the fundamentals your words your words your words your words your words hey. your words very very essential your words how many of us know that your words are seeds huh your words are seeds if you don't believe it as a human being believe it as a believer your words are seeds seed is not only when you give money your words are seeds you sow proverbs chapter 12 verse 18 says there is he whose words are like the piercings of a sword but the tongue of the righteous i believe promotes health proverbs 12 18 so it shows you two ways by which your words can operate or can function it is either your words are like swords that can kill or destroy they are like the piercings of a sword have you ever been around people that when they talk to you it's like something dies inside of you how many of you have been there I, almost all of us should raise our hands some of you have them around your life you know if you want to do something you don't go to them because the moment you get their words can't their words are stronger than caterpillars they can demolish within minutes who dash you 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 go do this one where your money who go help you the bible says there is one who speaks like the piercings of this world but the tongue of the wise your tongue does what your tongue speaks and your tongue speaks what words so the words that come from the wise promote health so your words are very fundamental your of course relationships are built on the lifeline of communication communication is the lifeline and the barrier the barrage the bridge upon which relationships are built so if you must build successively a godly relationship you must be conscious of your words because the fact that it was a godly relationship that was orchestrated by god does not mean that god is solely responsible for that relationship to grow god can give you something alive and you kill it say amen, amen. you guys are not ah, we should go let's let's go and do warfare spiritual warfare say amen, amen. that means we have to be careful of the things we say from today understand that your words are seeds your words are a medium of investment when you say good to people you are sowing seeds you are investing and you know what whatever you say is attracted to your life if you speak positive you will always attract positive relationships positive opportunities positive people positive realities around your life the bible says we shall have whatever we say but if you are always a negative talker and you know some christians hide under negativity or negative speech they hide under the guise of i'm saying my mind that mind that you said in five minutes can destroy a relationship that was built in 10 years so it's not all mind that should be said the bible says i know the thoughts i think towards you he didn't say it don't worry some of you want us let's go and let's start the spiritual warfare and it's essential before we bind devils let's understand this one because sometimes the enemy can be you there's a book i'm writing 
What do you do when the enemy is you? <laughs> uh, if you are with me, say amen. So your words are fundamental in building godly relationships. Your words are fundamental. The Bible says in Job chapter 6 verse 25, How forceful are right words. That means when you speak the right words, it carries power, it carries life. And the right words fundamentally are the word of God. The Bible says Jesus speaking said, The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. If you train yourself to speak the word of God or to say what God says, especially about your life and about people, you will discover that there is a power that backs your word to ensure that they are fulfilled. Is that it? Yeah. Number two, your character. Your character is fundamental. Building godly relationship. The Bible says in Philippians 1.27, it says, let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. I think that's in King James. The word conversation means your conduct, your character, your manner of life, how you behave. Your behavior is essential if you must build a godly relationship. Nobody wants to be around a nasty person. Nobody wants to be around a gossip. Even gossipers don't like gossipers as their friends, right? <laughs> amen. Some of you don't want to say amen, but may God have mercy in Jesus' name. I at least say amen for that one now. Even gossipers don't like to be around gossipers. So they get more offended when their gossiping colleague gossips them. Your character is important. The Bible spoke about the character of Jesus through the prophecies of Isaiah in chapter 42. He said, A bruised flax he will not break, neither will he destroy a reed. In other words, Jesus was a calm person. Jesus was gentle. And that was one of the reasons why people loved to be around him. The Bible even describes his character using the metaphor of a lamb. In 1 Peter chapter 3, we'll talk about that next week. The Bible describes the character and the worthy conduct of a woman. It says, having the character of a quiet and a gentle spirit. Not a... What's the word I'll use there? Not a violent attitude. There are some people that when they are angry or they are upset... Even the ground will be shaking. Have you seen those ones before? Me, I've seen them. All. The ground will be shaking. I had, I had a roommate in secondary school because I went to boarding house. Boarding house students say amen. amen. Whether you are X or you are there. Amen. This guy, wonderful guy, but if he gets angry, he can carry anything. At a point, we're afraid that maybe he'll carry the room one day. If he gets angry, he can carry anything. So one day he got offended at somebody. I think they were discussing football match or so. You know men, guys and football. Amen? Chelsea fans, say amen. I know some of you were watching yesterday. I hope you didn't bet. <laughs> amen. So this guy, I think they were discussing on football. Good discussion. And next thing we know, we just saw a bucket, a, a, an iron bucket that was full of water and clothes flying in the air as though it was paper. And he carried it with one hand. There are some people when they are angry. Are we together? So your character is, is important. And there is a lot I would have talked about in the area of character. There are essential characteristics that are that you need to carry that you need to display for you to build relationships that god has placed in your life loyalty is one of them are you faithful are you loyal to the relationship there's a word they call snitch have you heard that uh -huh. loyalty honesty honesty how sincere are you commitment 
commitment commitment <laughs> love sacrifice these are these are fundamentals when we discuss on marriage i would show you the four basic pillars upon which a successful marriage can be built love is just one of them so if you're about to get married to somebody and the only thing joining you with them is love brother think well say amen some of you are shaking you are already <laughs> number three your willingness number one your words number two your character number three your willingness your willingness to invest in a relationship is a fundamental your willingness not just one party doing all the doing all the investment and the other party is only receiving you know i don't blame some people that that's what they do to their relationship because that's what they do to god they are only receivers like mic receivers microphone receivers there are some people that are just receivers they just collect everything they don't give back they are not willing to invest their time their energy their commitment their loyalty their words nothing you send them text they will not send you text back send them airtime that's when they'll say thank you amen so you, you know it's it stems from how that the individual relates with god he sees god as an errand boy who is only out to give him things so the services he enjoys are the services where there is take it you are blessed so if he can do that to god his maker don't you think it's the same thing he will invest yeah amen why are some ladies looking at me like this i hope i'm not describing your situation so your willingness to invest in a relationship you treat it like a living thing the bible says in proverbs 18 verse 24 that a man who wants friends must himself be friendly so if you complain that you don't have friends maybe the reason is because you have not committed to friendship you have not befriended anybody so that you can be befriended if there's anything like that the bible says a man who wants friends must himself be friendly but there is a friend that sticketh closer than what i pray that god will give you such kind of friends in the name of jesus because some brothers money can reveal their greed you understand and then last but not the least definitely in fact the topmost god fundamentals in building godly relationships number one your words number two your character number three your willingness number four god god is number four not because he's the last but it's because i want to talk about him really God is fundamental. In fact, God is the foundation for every godly relationship. First of all, it is founded on God. It is built on God. His principles, his patterns. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, first four words, one to go. In the beginning, God. That's it. That means the beginning of everything is who? God. As far as that thing will last except the lord builds the house they labor in vain that means they, they can build though but if god is not the foundation of their building whatever they are building will be in vain but they will build something so that are relationships that can be built but not founded or built on god as the foundation or, or on his methods or principles it's still a relationship but God will not exist in it. And as a result, there will be no life in that relationship. Anything can scatter it. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know why some of us don't want to answer. Because it's like we're addressing a, a part of your life. God must be fundamental. God is the sole foundation of every godly relationship. Because when God is involved, reason... A purpose is revealed when God is involved actually the definition of purpose is God that's just it because purpose is revealed 
Purpose is not ambition, what you want to do. No. Purpose is a clear definition of your destiny and your existence in God before you were formed. Everybody say purpose. Good. His wisdom, his counsel, his backing must be important if you must build a godly relationship. Say amen. Alright, let's look at two today and then we'll close. I'm trying to be as basic as I can. I don't want to load you with too many information. Um, just so that we can have a temperate understanding. So let's look at some of the basic categories of relationship. Let's try and look at two today and we'll close. Number one, friendship. Everybody say friendship. Say friendship. Those are the back. Say friendship. Very good. Friendship. Friendship is the mutual sharing. The mutual sharing and intimate communication. The mutual sharing and intimate communication between two or more persons. The mutual sharing and intimate communication between two or more persons. That means it is based upon mutual interest. Mutual interest. The word mutual means I like something you like. Or I'm after something you are after. And so that connects us together. So friendship is the mutual sharing. Sharing means an exchange of values. An exchange of ideas. It's a communication. It's a cyclical flow. Of things between two or more persons. And it, it is usually intimate. It is usually intimate. Actually, you must understand that friendship or the word friend is a covenant word. Amen? Yeah. Because what will bind two people together, it must either be a mutual interest or a common goal. In other words, there are things that will exist between these two or more persons that will establish friendship. And that's almost the same definition with covenant. Or that's almost the same in relationship to covenant. It's usually between two people. There is a goal involved. There is a target involved. And so because of that, we become friends. Maybe because we share information alike. Or maybe because we share ideas or concept. That means you can be a friend to somebody or somebody can become your friend based on many things. For some ladies, they like the way you dress. They become your friend. Is that true? Or you both have the same fashion sense. Alright? But true friendship includes an intimate communication. That means that you will know yourself to a point of intimacy. There is going to be a closeness that will exist between these two people. It is strategic. We have different examples of them in scripture. But let's look at the scripture first. Proverbs 17 verse 17. Proverbs 17 17. It says, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for the day of adversity. Is that true? Yes. A friend loves at all times. So if it is true friendship, the love is unconditional. The love is all weather. Not the type that only love you during heat season because there is AC in your house. So they will always be around to gist. It's not the gist though. It's the AC they are enjoying. But they only love you when your, food, your pot comes down from the stove. In fact, they have studied you so well. They time you. They know the time your breakfast or your lunch or dinner is coming down. Or the type that loves you because we watch football together. Okay? The Bible says, a friend loveth at all times. You can use these principles we are digging from the word of God to begin to scan all the people you call friends in your life. By the way, I'm not talking about your Facebook friends. Forget that thing. Facebook is a wrong definition of friendship. You hear me? Friend. is my friend. We are friends on Facebook. So you can befriend a native doctor on Facebook, but you don't know he's a native doctor. 
Yes or no? Yes. You know why? Because there is no intimacy. Intimacy goes beyond social to physical contact. It's not just seeing the person selfie. No. There are people, there are pictures, every of their pictures they post. So you don't see their real face. There are some other people, every of their picture, there is foundation upon the face or there is pancake. So you don't see their real face. You don't get to see the real face when they wake up in the morning. Don't worry, when we enter marriage, I'll, 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 talk, I'll talk about that. With all due respect to ladies, say amen. Yes. You can't say that one is your friend. No. There has to be a, a level of intimacy. A friend, love it at all times. Somebody that stands with you, both in thick and thin, in abundance and in lack. Let, let's look at some examples. Number one example of friendship in scripture was God and Abraham. The Bible says in the book of First Peter, oh sorry, James, rather, chapter 2, that Abraham was described as the friend of God. God himself said in Genesis chapter 18, when he was on his way to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, shall I hide from Abraham what I intend to do? You see that when someone is really your friend, there is almost no secret between the two of you. Abraham became a friend of God because God discovered that Abraham was no longer following him only because of the promise of his son. So that the Bible says in Romans chapter 4 that he was strong in faith, giving glory to God, regardless of the deadness of his body or the deadness of Sarah's womb. That was why when God told Abraham, go and offer your son as a burnt offering, Abraham willingly obliged. In fact, he didn't even consult his wife, who he was closest to. His closest human relationship, he didn't consult her. Because Abraham, his relationship with God grew to a point of friendship. That was why God could come in a human form. The, since the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, God had not visited the earth. In fact, in Genesis chapter 6, the Bible says, God said, my spirit will no longer strive with man. The spirit of God was taken out of the way. That was why the first flood was, you know, destroyed the earth. But that God will come down and visit a man and talk with the man. To a point where Abraham began to negotiate with God. God said, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because the cry of their sin is great and it has come up to me. Abraham said, shall you destroy the righteous and the wicked? God said, no. Abraham said, if you find 50 righteous men, will you destroy the whole city for the sake of 50? God said, no. And Abraham kept the negotiation and God did not complain. Why? Because it was his friend he was talking to. Do you know that you can walk with God to a point where you become a friend of God? Job said, where the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. That God will be sharing information with you. Information that doesn't consign you. Why? Because God has found a friend in you. And you can find a friend in Jesus. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He's the living. That's how you describe your friend. He's the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Okay, let's sing the chorus since you started singing. In sorrows, in sorrows. A friend loved at all times. In trouble is my He tells me every care on him too. A friend will never complain. They will never say that you are inconveniencing them. A friend will never say you are inconveniencing me. There are some people, the first time you meet them, they just want to do everything for you. But after a while, their reaction towards you, you will notice it. 
this person is getting tired of me not a friend a friend loveth at all times whether we are drinking gari or we are eating pasta he's still my friend whether he becomes popular today or he's not popular he's still my friend it's unconditional that's why it's a covenant word so be careful the people you you call your friends you call an unbeliever a potential unbeliever with a christian name your friend his name is peter but he's the biggest gossip in the office just because he has a christian not even a christian it's not like a christian name bible name even judas is a bible name abby or your name your children now amen no a friend loves at all times david and jonathan another example the bible says that the love between them was like the love between a man and a woman now the bible tells us that you cannot understand the love between a man and a woman in proverbs chapter 30 it says some things that you cannot understand he said the way of a man and a maid a woman the love between a man and a woman don't worry when we enter marriage and courtship i will go there i know some of you want me to go there quick quick wait wait we'll go there you can't understand it because even them don't understand that love that they can quarrel now and the next day a text message how are you then the other person responds i'm fine then this person who sent the message say, okay she's in the talking mood now i miss you but you quarrel with the person yesterday just like some of us quarrel with god hello you know now you don't pray for one week because they told you that money will come to you next week and it didn't come so you don't pray for one week you quarrel with god then after one week when you have noticed that oh boy living life without god is it's like living in the desert then you find your way into one pneumatic service and when we are singing that song i, I have found a friend in jesus you say ah yes jesus the one i love is ever before he seals upon my heart i live for the one and when they start singing that song, that's when you now you now end your quarrel with God. Say, God, God, Amen. That's what I told you last week. I told you that people often say they often use the word, you know, when they feel guilty after committing a sin or an offense. They often use this phrase that the Holy Spirit flogged me or the Holy Spirit rebuked me. The Holy Spirit doesn't rebuke; He doesn't flog. It's not in His nature. You don't understand how gentle he is. He's so gentle that he can leave you and you don't know he has gone. He's so gentle that he doesn't announce his presence until you invite him. What he does is that he convicts. The person that is flogging and rebuking you is your conscience. Because your conscience is you. He knows you very well. But the Bible says if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our conscience David and Jonathan loved themselves they came into a covenant Jonathan did not mind that David will rule and he will support David that's friendship you die to yourself that person will want to see you rise even if it means at the expense of himself or herself that's true friendship some of us unfortunately have been moving around with gossipers murderers backbiters one of my mentors say when they bite you in the back you move forward that's why they call it backbiting they bite you at the back some of us move around with thieves in the all kinds of people and just when you need them the most they lash out on you and most of them have christian names most of the times in fact some of us are here you are closer to your muslim neighbors or your unbelieving neighbors than your christian neighbors it's unfortunate that it's in church that people are afraid to relate with one another because they are afraid of being hurt can we have the days when the friendship between david and jonathan returns where you can be naked before this person and you know nobody will know 
And if you are looking for it, you, you have to start sowing it first as an attitude. Another example of friendship was Jesus and John. John the Beloved and Jesus. Jesus and John the Beloved, they were so close, so close, so close. Out of the twelve, Jesus had three. Out of the three, he had one. The Bible said they were so close that usually in their casual meetings, John would put his head on Jesus' chest. You know the Bible says in King James, King James will say, he put his head on his bosom. The word bosom means chest. What it means is, it, 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 it's, it's a metaphor to describe the intimacy between two people. So much so that when Jesus at the last supper said, Some, one of you will betray me, nobody could ask him. All of them were asking themselves. Then I'm very sure they now thought John. Say, ask him now. You know, say, Ingo, yeah, Ingo, talk to you. Ingo, hear yeah, you. And then the Bible says, John leaned on his bosom. John was so close to Jesus that he knew Jesus. When Jesus appeared to them after he resurrected at the Sea of Galilee, he told them, Children, have you caught anything? They said, Nothing. Put your net on the right side. Of course, I don't have time. I would have shown you that the right side there didn't literally mean the right side. The Greek rendition meant it was talking about faith. In other words, do this operation now on the strength of faith. That's what it means. But that's not our teaching. And the Bible says when they threw the net, it caught so much fish, but the net will not break. The first time Peter met Jesus and that miracle happened, the net broke. But the second time when Jesus came in his resurrected form, the net did not break. You know why? Because Jesus' body was broken so that we can be made whole. After that miracle, they were still contemplating who this person was. The Bible says, John spoke to Peter and said, It is the Lord. I know him. He was so close to him that he was the only disciple that stood at the cross. Every other person ran away or stood at a distance. He stood with Jesus. You know what it means to be crucified? They will strip you naked and hang you on the tree. All that picture you see about Jesus with small boxers, and that's, that's fake naked that's why it was a punishment given to a cursed person in israel cursed is anyone that hanged on a tree galatians 3 13. and in jesus's most shameful and reproachful moment john stood by him said i will continue with you forever you know what when jesus told peter follow me in john 21 sadly that is 21st chapter as well Peter turned and looked at John and then he asked Jesus, he said, what of this one? Because this follow me you are saying, it means I, I should follow you even when it is in suffering. He said, what of this one? Jesus said, what's your business with him? If I want him to stay till I come back or he will die, is it your business? You follow him. In other words, all of you will definitely die the death of martyrdom. But this one, because of my relationship with him, I must come back and visit him. Somebody say friendship. Number two, partnership. Partnership is still friendship, but it is a stage further in friendship. Remember that friendship is about the mutual sharing and intimate communication between two people. They share information. They share interests. They share concepts and ideas. But when it comes to partnership, there is still sharing. But this time around, there is a goal involved. There is an end. There is something to be fulfilled. It means that somebody can be your friend with or without a goal to be achieved. Huh? Yes, that is my friend. But nothing really is being achieved, but he's my friend. Because there are different kinds. So what is partnership? Partnership is the coming together or mutual agreement or pact between two persons. The coming together or mutual agreement or pact, P-A-C-T, between two persons to achieve a common goal is an agreement, is a covenant. And if it's a covenant, it means an oath will be involved. So David and Jonathan's friendship graduated into partnership. The Bible says they swore an oath to each other. 
That was why when David was king years later, he asked, Who is in the house of Saul that I can show kindness to for Jonathan's sake? It was a covenant. So when he comes into partnership, it's not just business partnership I'm talking about. No. 50-50. No. Partnership in God's perspective is covenant. We agree together. The covenant can be so strong that it will transcend to our generations unborn. You have heard of people say, he's my family friend. Where do you think it came out from? Two men love themselves as friends and they came into partnership sometimes they may not verbalize it to themselves but when they do everything together and it becomes almost inevitable to separate them before you know what's happening they get married and their family begins to come under the influence some of you God has blessed you with friends like this that are partners they are destiny mates that's what I call them I know we know soulmates. There is destiny mate. Huh? It's people that come into your life and you know these ones. <laughs> I will be with them till. It's called partnership. Somebody say partnership. Partnership rather at some point is the advanced stage of friendship. I've shared that already. So each one brings to the table their advantage, their personal strength and advantage. And it is geared and channeled towards helping the other person for the common goal. It's called partnership. Second Corinthians 2 verse 12 to 13. Paul had a partner in ministry. His name was Titus. You know one thing about Titus was that Titus, first of all, was a, a spiritual son of Paul. But Titus' relationship with Paul grew to a point where they became partners that means that the relationship between a spiritual father and a son or a spiritual father and a daughter or a spiritual mother and son and daughter is a covenant relationship and it can be built to a point where you no longer see the person as a son but as a partner that was titus okay our projectors are not working let me show you that second corinthians 2 verse 12 and 13 I wish we had the message translation we would have looked at it but I just I want to read this for you so that you can listen verse 12 to 13 he said furthermore when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel and a door was opened to me by the Lord I had no rest in my spirit why because I did not find Titus my brother but taking my leave of them, I departed from Macedonia. When you read Titus chapter 1, if you read the letter of the road to Titus, he was referring to Titus as his son. But Titus had come into a mutual covenant with Paul to a point where he grew beyond son and father to partner. Paul said that God opened a door of ministry for me in Troas. Is there anything more blessed than that? I saw a golden opportunity. I knew God was backing me, yet I didn't stay there. Why? There were, I lacked a partner. After praying for breakthrough, pray for partners. Otherwise, you will stand there alone and the devil can rubbish you. You didn't hear what I said. <laughs> pray to be great, but don't pray to be great alone. Pray to have partners of destiny that will be great like you. Because this, the Bible says, one shall be overpowered pray that god will lift other people with you too so that we become partners he said god was the one that opened the door is there anything bigger than that it was the will of god for me to preach in troas yet i did not why because my partner some of us here are without life partners i'm not talking about marriage now no I'm talking about people whom you know have been covenanted to your destiny. People whose existence are like support systems to you. They are like extra life to you. One time Paul told Timothy, he said, bring John Mark for he's profitable to me in ministry. Are there people like that in your life? If there are none, we have to pray for God to send them home. We have to pray. Maybe why God has not lifted you is because you lack those set of people. 
Those are the people that can stay praying at midnight, interceding for you, and you are snoring. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that can fast seven days, and you are not aware, and they are calling upon the name of God for your issue. Partner. Somebody say partnership. I remember in 2014 when I came to this town, I know why God had sent me here. And so I began to intercede and pray, you know, for the fulfillment of that thing. And as I began to pray for the first few months, I was alone doing the prayer. And laboring alone is not sweet, I tell you. Because you can die and somebody will inherit it. When you labor alone in the spirit, you will be exposed. The attack can come from anywhere. And so a few months later, I met somebody. Bishop, come. I met Bishop. So we began to talk. There was something about our relationship. Every word that comes out of his mouth agrees with my spirit. Every word that comes out of my mouth agrees with. So if I talk, it's like the answer of what is in his heart. Amen. And then we began to pray together. So it started as friends, but we became partners. We began to pray together. And remember those nights we'll pray alone sometimes esm tent sometimes any tent that was free it was the night we were coming back from class and we had a prayer time 12 12 midnight so we're coming out coming with two ladies and it was looking like it will rain so we got to e block and then we bade them farewell on our way to the ground as soon as we turned to go to the ground rain started falling abby you remember that night now rain beat us and when we got to the ground the rain stopped you know how meduguri rain is so we're already soaked and once rain fall like that in rainy season mosquitoes will come out so we said oh we are here let's pray and then we started praying i remember some of those times when we hold our hands to pray the mosquitoes will bite after some point we'll, we'll, we'll scratch like this <laughs> and we began to pray together and years passed by many things began to happen and this is an example of partnership. Amen. God bless you. Come, let me hug you. Stand up. Let me hug you. It's been a while. <laughs> Amen. Well, God has blessed me with some more. I just use that as an example. Paul said, I didn't find titles. So I went back. That there are some people that when they are blessed, they are not satisfied when you are not blessed. <laughs> pray that we are going to pray that God will, God will open the doors for those people to come into your life. Partners in destiny. They are there with you whether you are sick or not. And every time you see them, there is a, a, an inner drive and motivation for your purpose. Even when you are discouraged, when you see them. I remember those days. Sometimes there will be no food. And then he will come to my block. And the last rice I have, I'm preparing it. Don't ask me how I cook. I used to cook those days. Whether it was sweet or not, we, we, we add the Holy Ghost on top. And it was sweet. You remember? We we'll eat and then we we'll begin to talk. I remember, I think I was 300 level. We're staying at C block, right? You remember? There's no food, so I will go to his house. I will go to his room. There was always food in his room. There was always food. Pastor Henry. So we'll go and gist, gist. Do all the gist, spiritual gist and everything. Me, I'm just waiting for the food to come. Amen. But from that communication, that conversation, something began to grow inside of us and we began to see the future together it's called partnership it's called partnership those are the kind of people that can lose five hundred thousand to keep their friendship with you yes even when you offended them because of the relationship it's called partnership partner partnership Ruth and naomi was one example the Bible says in Ruth chapter 1 and 15, Ruth spoke to Naomi. She said, Entreat me not to leave you. 
when Naomi said, Ofra, your, your sister in is gone. Follow her. Go back to your nation. At least there is food there. There is security there. I'm alone. I lost my husband. I lost my sons. I don't know what will happen to me. Ruth told her, she said, Entreat me not to leave you or turn not back from me, from following you. For wherever you go, I will go. This is the language of partnership. This is the term, these are the terms and conditions of partnership. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. Go on, next verse is even stronger. He said, Where you die, I will die. Meaning the same bullet will kill you, make it kill me. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. That's why your spouse, they call, that, they call them your life partner. That's the relationship that should exist. We are bonded together. So if armed robbers come with gun, and they say, who should we shoot? It's not the one that will now say you, you first, no. Partnership. Somebody say partnership. Guess what? As I close... The greatest existence of partnership is supposed to be between the Holy Ghost and a believer. The Bible says, He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. One spirit. One spirit. One spirit. One spirit. The grace of our God, Jesus, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God. And the fellowship, the word fellowship there is the word partnership in Greek. That we come together. It's a mutual agreement. It's a covenant for the achievement of something. The Bible says the spirit and the bride says what? Come. True partnership can exist between the Holy Ghost and a believer. So the Holy Ghost is no longer just your Lord. He has become your partner. Come sir. He has become your partner. So you are a minister. The Holy Spirit is your partner. When you stand, people see you, the body, the container. But they don't see your partner, the Holy Ghost. You are seated in your office. People see you, the office clerk, or see you, so-so person. But they don't see the Holy Spirit, your partner. Meaning that everything that you do, you should do it together with Him. The Holy Ghost, my partner. So if you are in a fix, who should you call on? The Holy Ghost. Some of us, when we are in a, when we are in a fix, you, you take your phone and you are looking for your contact. We're driving one of our brothers recently. And I told him, I said, if anything happens in this car, like an accident or anything, I will disappear and leave you. He said, he will hold my clothes and follow me. <laughs> now, why would I say that? I said that because I knew that he that is joined to the Lord is what? One spirit. So that person, I'm connected to the Holy Ghost. We are one. If an accident will happen or something tra tragic will happen, it's very simple. I just become one with him and then he takes me into the realm of the spirit. And that's all. That's what you call disappear. Abi? Yes. Disappear means just become invisible. That's all. True partnership. You can't fulfill purpose without the Holy Ghost. You can't go through life without the Holy Spirit. He's the only person whose voice is distinct when he speaks to you. He's the only person that when you have committed a big offense, everybody ostracizes you. He says, it's okay, let's continue from there. He's the only person that can be patient with you. He's the only person that can reveal the plans of the enemy. He's our partner. Our relationship with him starts from the place of Lord or Savior, moves to the place of Lord and then grows into partnership. We become one. That means a time will come where you become one with God. And when people look at you, they know that this one carries God. The Bible says that they looked at them and they knew that they had been with Jesus. Is there a level of intimacy like that? Yes. It's called partnership. Thank you, sir. You can sit down. It's called partnership. It's no longer about ministry. It's no longer about seeking anointing. Just partner with the Holy Ghost. It's no longer about praying for a husband or praying for a wife. Just partner with the Holy Ghost. And at a time when you are not even looking for a damsel, the damsel will come. 
At a time where you are not even looking out for a relationship, the husband will come. Why? Because you have a stronger partner. That's the person when there is there is tumult in your organization and they're about to sack some people. You forget about them, you go back and you are singing and just spending time with him. And then he goes to the office and changes the list and I, it takes your name away from that list. On Monday when they are calling the list, the person who wrote your name there is looking for your name. Why? My partner. The Bible says, he told Ezekiel, he said, son of man, can these dry bones live? Ezekiel said, for me, it's impossible. But not when I have a partner. He said, you only knows. Do you, have you come into partnership with the Holy Spirit? Some of us do business and we don't understand or we don't believe the place of partnership with the Holy Ghost. You are smart, you are intelligent. You can calculate, you can solve mass, you know everything. That's why when you are in your problem, it looks like he's not there. It's not that he's not there, but you have not grown to a place of partnership with him. You think that God doesn't understand business. You know that every of our limitation is actually a reflection of pride. Every limitation you have in your life that still exists is actually a display of a life or a side or a part of your life isolated from God. Why? Because you think that his wisdom is not sufficient for that place. But let him be your partner in everything. Even in a relationship. Don't think that you are secure because the guy loves me and I love him. Partner with the Holy Ghost. Because Satan used to appear in people's dreams. I've seen... A demon can appear in his dream. And the demon will take your face and carry firewood and he's pursuing him. And when he wakes up, he says, you are not my wife, you are a witch. After all, he dreamt. I, I taught you these things. I told you that Satan can manipulate these things. Yes. But when you are in partnership with the Holy Ghost, no way, no way, no way. When you see certain music ministers stand and they worship and every part of you, every part of you is raptured in the presence of God. What you are experiencing there is a report card of the partnership they have with the Holy Ghost. And you know what thing with the Holy Ghost? When you spend time with Him in secret, you may not know, you may not feel his presence. You may not know that he is there until you go out amongst people. It is when you are around people that the strength of your partnership with the Holy Ghost is revealed. That was Jesus' secret. That was why Jesus prayed. You see, when you understand this thing, prayer will become a lifestyle. You don't pray because you are looking for a request. You now pray because it is partnership business. You pray about everything. You pray about everything. The Bible says in the Living Translation, the Living Bible Translation, Philippians 4 verse 6, it says, Do not be anxious for anything or do not worry about anything, but instead pray about everything. You pray about everything, not because you want to be religious, but there is a place of partnership you have come into. It's like if you don't involve him in anything, that thing cannot push through. You have a business deal. You are just waiting to go there tomorrow and sign the contract. Meanwhile, the people who are bidding for that contract with you, they have baited in blood, collected all kinds of charms, visited malams. They have partnered themselves with witchcraft and demons. You, you stand alone. That's why the, the, when you go on Monday, it escapes you. When you partner with the Holy Ghost, even people that hate you want to bless you. They can be talking against you and be giving you money. They are talking, you, 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 self, you. They are giving you money. Then when they go back, they say, wait, why are you even giving me? Somebody say, my partner. He's called who? The Holy Ghost. I don't have too many secrets in my life. But the few that I have, I've maintained them. I've maintained consistency. One of it is partnership. I pray always, not because of it has become a life. You can be driving in a car and the Holy Ghost is talking to you. You can be seated on your table preparing a report and he's talking to you about something else. You can be eating food and he's showing you a vision about somebody. <laughs> that was what existed with the prophets of old. That Ezekiel, every chapter, the Spirit of the Lord was upon me. The hand of the Lord carried me. The Spirit of God was with me. I was in the Spirit. Partnership, that's all. Partnership. 
and the disciples were so much in partnership with the Holy Ghost that even prison doors could not hold them. The Bible says when they locked Peter in the prison, an angel opened the door for Peter. The Bible says they kept sick people around him just so that his shadow would pass. Why? Because that shadow was a reflection of his partner. Are you ready to partner with him? Stand up on your feet. We are going to pray. The one I love least ever before He seals upon my heart I live for the one I love One I love He is ever the I live by the one First prayer point, two prayer points and we'll be done tonight. We spoke about friendship. We spoke about partnership. Listen, listen here. We are going to pray. Some of you are lonely. You, are, you have been lonely for many years. When you need help, people hardly arise for you. But you can kill yourself for others. It's time for God to begin to bring men in your lives. Every, every friend you have around you, they are almost there for one benefit or the other. It's time for God to bring people who will stand with you in thick and thin. Some of you have experienced stagnations in your life. Why? Because you had no one to look out for you. You had no one to stand for you. Can we lift our voice and ask the Lord and say, Lord, in this new season of my life, open the doors for true godly relationships, true godly partnerships into my life give access 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 to those relationships access for for them in my life open your mouth and pray come on pray come on pray come on pray your next level is determined by the relationships around your life when god will make a man he sends a man to him when Satan will destroy a man, he sends a man to him. Paul was blind for three days in Damascus. But then a man came, named Ananias. He said, Brother Saul. Brother Saul. Talking about intimacy, friendship, partnership. Say, Lord. Grant access to godly relationships, access to godly friendships, friends that will be there with or without benefits, friends that will become helpers of destiny, friends that will become friends indeed, a friend loved at all times. Some of you have experienced betrayal, some of you have experienced lacking, distrust issues. Come on, pray, come on, pray, come on, pray. Kala Brato, Brata, Banana, Brigadier. Man, like a daily Brigadier. Haro, Bolo, Zoro, Boko, Yabaha. Come on, pray. Send them into my life, oh God. Send men and women approved by you. Godly friendship. Godly relationship. Hallelujah. Listen. You, some of you are not praying this prayer. You are too spiritual. You will not pray. Listen to what Jesus told Peter. Luke chapter 22, verse 31. He says, Simon, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. In other words, prior to, or b- before Peter's knowledge of that, Satan had been going before God on the case of Peter. Meaning that there were many things that would have happened to Peter. Had Satan succeeded, Peter would have fallen. 
But Jesus said, I saw it in the spirit. But as a friend, I prayed for you. I prayed for you. Some of you have mo- what you call friends are unbelievers naturally. Nobody to stand and pray for you. So a contract is coming to you in three days time. You are already assured. Three days later, it's as if something changed it. You need friends, oh my brother. Look at me everybody. You need friends. You need friends. Imagine if that crippled man had no four, no friends like the four friends. He would have remained crippled forever. Some of you need friends that will connect you to graces. Some of you know it was a friend that brought you to Pneumatic and your life changed. You need those kind of people. I want you to pray that prayer point again. Lord, in this season of my life, friends, partners, authorized and assigned by you, authorized and assigned, pray it from the depth of your spirit. Enough of harboring unbelievers that you call friends. Enough of harboring backstabbers, harboring gossipers, harboring snitchers. People that you give your life for, but they stab you at the back. It's time for God or then God approved friends. Come and pray, come and pray. Come and pray from the death of your spirit. God send them into my life. Send them into my life. Hallelujah. Listen, pray this prayer as often as you breathe. Let me tell you. Some of you are one friend away to your breakthrough. Some of you, you need one person. It was a friend that Joseph met in prison that took him to the palace. When his brothers tried to kill him, a friend, the Bible says, if there is a friend that sticks it closer. There are friends that are like destiny helpers. You meet them and then a grace enters your life. You meet them, you meet somebody through them and that is it. One recommendation. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. Holy Ghost, in this new season, I choose to partner with you in every aspect of my life. In every aspect of my life. Forgive me for isolating my business. Forgive me for isolating my relationship. Forgive me for isolating my marriage. Forgive me for isolating my exams. Forgive me for isolating this and that. But Lord, I make a declaration. I choose to partner with you, Holy Ghost. Open your mouth and pray from the depth of your spirit. With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things, all things, all things are possible. Come on, pray. 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 I partner with the Holy Ghost. I partner with the Holy Ghost in this new season. In business, in my job, in my marriage, in my relationship. I accept and I acknowledge that I can't do it on my own. I partner with your wisdom. I partner with your power. I partner with your presence. Holy Ghost. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Become my senior partner. Become my biggest partner. If God be for us, who shall be against us? If God be for you, if God be for you, for you. The psalmist says, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me in. my 
my partner, as my friend. Surrender every part of your life that you have withheld from me. Every part of your life that you have with isolated from me. All eyes closed. Please be, be calm, be still wherever you are. God is calling us to a depth of relationship with Him. And it is called partnership. Where you will do nothing without Him. Where He becomes your everything. If you are here and you are not born again, then you cannot enjoy this exclusive reserve for the saints. You cannot know God so intimately to a point where he becomes your partner. Your partner. You cannot call on his name and he answers until you become one with him. While we stand, eyes closed everywhere, if you are here and you need to give your heart to the Lord, you have heard the sermon, you have witnessed everything that has happened, but you are not born again. You don't know the Lord Jesus. Whenever you are, I want you to raise your right hand very quickly. Very, very quickly. Or perhaps, perhaps you are rededicating your life. You used to be with the Lord, but something happened and you have derailed. Frustration, maybe people backstabbed you. Or the pressures of life. And you felt like nobody loved you anymore. And you strayed away from the divine path. Tonight, God is calling you. He wants to restore you to himself. Raise your hands wherever you are. Raise your hands wherever you are. Raise it up high. Coming back to you. Sing it for me. Raise your hand very high. And if you are raising your hand, you want to be born again, or you are saying yes to Jesus for the first time, or you are rededicating. If your right hand is raised up, I want you to walk to the front. Very quickly. Walk to the front. Let's restore you back to the Lord. There is a place of partnership. There is a place of intimacy reserved for you and Him. There is a place where it is just you and Him. Join them if you need to join them quickly. Those of you in front, I want you to just say this prayer after me. I want you to believe from your heart. It is a restoration. New life is about to begin afresh for you. And God wants to bring you to a very close place of fellowship with him. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I acknowledge my faults. I acknowledge that I've strayed away. But I return to you. I ask that you wash me by your precious blood. And I thank you because my sins are forgiven. I thank you because I'm born again. I receive eternal life in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for them today. I declare that their sins are forgiven. I declare them blood wash. Congregation, agree with me. I declare them blood washed. I declare that from today, their past is over. And I declare that new life begins for them today. In the name of Jesus. I declare that they receive the abundance of righteousness and the gift of grace. And I declare that they reign with Christ. In Jesus' name. I declare that from today, you will come to love the Lord passionately and intimately for the rest of your life in Jesus name can we celebrate God for them look at me listen not only are you anew in Christ now 
but there is a step further that God wants to take it to and we discuss about partnership all right I want you to know that the Holy Spirit has come to walk with you and he will give you victory over sin he will erase he has erased the past and your future is assured in him please very quickly just follow that gentleman there the one I'm pointing to and he will attend to you get your contacts and just talk to you quickly God bless you please celebrate them just follow him I'll put you in front in front of my destiny you are all of my you are all chapter 2 I want us to pray one prayer point is that okay before we sit down and we close the meeting one prayer point everybody stand please Micah chapter 2 verse 12 and 13 I want you to be very conscious we are in a season listen I told you from the beginning of the sermon I said that we are in a heavy season to experience the power and the grace of God that will make for our lifting that will make for our elevation that will make for our progression and I want to take advantage of this season so Sundays like this when we come there are prayers that will be leading us into and then we'll definitely come into the series I talked about there are things that must shift in our lives are we ready to pray? students are you ready to pray? Because God showed me that this prayer point involves many students here. Chapter 2 verse 12. There's something wrong with this screen. I can't see. Let me use this one. I will surely assemble all of you, O Jacob. Wherever you see Jacob or Israel, I want you to put SGNI. Is that okay? Now read together. One, two, go. Listen to the next verse. Listen. Verse 13. The one who breaks open will come up before them. They will break out, pass through the gate, and go out by it. Their king will pass before them with the Lord at their head. We are going to pray and invoke the power of the highest to break everything that looks like an obstacle or an opposition in your life some of you it is in regards please don't take this prayer session for granted some of you it concerns your career some of you are stuck at a point there is something called breakthrough breakthrough is needed when there is an impregnable opposition before you the bible says the one who breaks open we are going to invoke him to arise if there be any opposition if there be any wall around your career that is threatening your advancement some of us are stuck in a place some of you in your finances some of you in your relationship relationship cannot translate into marriage there will always be one problem or the other and it breaks then you start another one some of you in even in your marriage I want you to look at your life as we pray this prayer. If there is any way at all that there seems to be an opposition to your advancement, I want you to invoke the power of the highest. The Bible says the one who breaks open will come before them and they will break out. Oh God, arise and let there be a breakthrough. Let there be a breakthrough. Lift your voice and pray. No, 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 no. I, I felt you pray better. Some of you are anointed. But there's something that threatens advancement in your life. As far as ministry is concerned. Some of you have great business ideas. 
but something just will not allow it translate into a reality. Some of you have been collecting the same salary for a long time. Some of you have not been promoted in your job. Some of you, your academics. Some of you in your projects. Come and pray, come and pray, come and pray, come and pray. Let the power of the highest, let the power of the highest arise. And the one who break open will come up before them and they will break out and they will break out. Let the God of breakthrough arise. Let the God of breakthrough arise. Come on, pray, come on, pray, come on, pray. In Jesus' name. One more prayer. I'd like you to pray this. If you think there is nothing like this in your life, no problem. Pray for your family members. Because I sense the power of God. I'm seeing a wild wind. I'm seeing a wild wind blowing in circles. Something is about to break open for somebody here. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. The next prayer point is against demonic evil patterns. That have been secretly established in your life or in your family. Listen. Listen. Please. Calmness everywhere. Listen. I want to teach you something. When we start the series of spiritual warfare and deliverance, I will show you many things. I will teach you a lot of spiritual intelligence. The Bible says of a parable that a sower went out to sow seed. Isn't it? And while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tars. That means that at the expense of your ignorance, or when you have no knowledge of, or when you are down, for some of you, it happened with your parents, you inherited it. Satan meandered his way and he has planted evil patterns. What is a pattern? A pattern is a cycle of operation. I taught you that the devil doesn't change, doesn't do anything new. He only recycles. When you see a particular operation, a particular affliction, a particular thing happening over and over again is a pattern. It is established by demonic intelligence. Some of you inherited it from your parents. You can start a project, but you never finish it. They build a house for 10 years. You stay in a career for five years, no promotion. For six years, no promotion. With all the master's degree you added, no promotion for you. Or that you retire from an organization and they will not pay you. It happened to your father. Now it's happening to you. Some of you, it is in your spiritual life, in your ministry. Some of you are anointed and blessed and gifted. But there is a pattern of invisibility. Nobody will celebrate the gift you carry. That pattern must be broken. The Bible says in 2 Samuel 5, David said that the God of breakthroughs have broken through from me. And he called that place Baal Perazim. If you pray tonight, there are some walls that will crumble for life in your life. Say after me, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare. Let the God of breakthroughs arise on my behalf. And break through every pattern established by darkness by demonic intelligence by ancestral reproaches whether in my life or inherited from my father's house or from my mother's house oh God of breakthroughs arise and let there be breakthrough Open your mouth and pray. Oh, 
Open your mouth and pray. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Patterns of instability. Pattern of shame. Patterns of delay. Patterns of delay. Patterns of poverty. Of impoverishment. Pattern of pain. strings please I will prophesy over our lives I told you I saw the power of God like a wild wind moving can I pray is it okay lift your hands I see all forms of impoverishment delay reproaching families father in the name of Jesus Lord, within the next few seconds, I pray that your power will move across this hall. Eyes closed. By the power of the highest, every demonic pattern 
every ancestral yoke you inherited it from your parents or you inherited it from your origin where you came from patterns of delay patterns of impoverishment patterns of poverty a cause that will not just go after several prayers and fastings patterns that seem to work against the academics of people in that family patterns that threatens the success of men and women patterns that ravage against ministries father i decree and declare by the name that is above every other name let those patterns come to an end now 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 oh god of breakthrough i invoke your mighty power arise and let there be breakthrough 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 i roll away reproach i roll away shame does it help them the power of god is everywhere i roll away shame let those chains be broken let those curses be annulled and in the name of jesus lift your hands i pray for everyone here and i decree and declare by the grace of the almighty step into a season of advancement forceful advancement in your spiritual life advancement in ministry advancement that force that has fought your career that has commanded stagnation commanded retrogression right now by the power of god let those spirits live your life now let them live your life now let them live your life now and i declare advancement in your career advancement in business advancement at your job advancement at your families advancement at your families advancement in your relationships i see a lot of families here listen it's like a pattern relationships will start but just when it wants to translate into marriage something comes and scatters it in the name of jesus let that cause be rolled away now let that cause be rolled away now and everyone that is due for marriage i declare and decree that your season has come for the students lift your hands father in the name of jesus i pray for every student here that is under any form of spiritual manipulation you read you attend classes but when exam period comes you all of a sudden will become afraid or you see negative dreams that materializes you go to exam halls and you forget what you have read in the name that is above every other name i command the fire of god to chase those spirits out of your life i command the fire of god to chase those spirits out of your life i declare by the mercies of god shame and reproach is rolled from your life shame and reproach is rolled away from your life I invoke the mercies of God for you. Right now you are already afraid. Exams are beginning and it looks like the cycle of failure is about to start. Let the God of Jeshurun that rided the heavens to help you. I declare that his mercies will speak for you. Let mercy speak for you. Let mercy speak for you. In the name of Jesus. And I declare that you will come out with flying colors. In Jesus name. Wave your hands and give God praise tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus name.